Hello everyone, this is Leah with Scraptastic Patchwork and today I would like to show you a very easy boho scrappy raggy bracelet and this is one I made for my mom that's why it looks like a child size because <laughs> she has very tiny wrists so basically the construction of this is simple and what I'm hoping is just showing you this simple way to do this you can take that and go with it hopefully it'll inspire you to be your own designer and come up with even better and more fun and funky designs so the the materials needed are this fabric twine made from fabric scraps and I'm going to use these paper beads. So this is literally materials that you can find around your house because if you don't have fabric you can use clothing and you just rip them into or cut them into one inch strips. And then paper beads you can make from regular paper that you've painted or you can use magazines and I'm not going to show you how to make this or how to make these I'm going to link below in the description my friend Darlene who is the one that taught me how to make these and I couldn't improve better on her tutorials so go ahead and and look at her tutorials on how to make these beads and how to make this fabric twine and then besides these two materials then you'll just need a button and I'm using a shank button because it kind of lifts the button up a little bit uh, it's a little easier to get your little loop around but you can use a normal button too and you can make this by hand uh, by sewing by hand with a needle and thread but I'm going to I'm going to actually do both show you how you can do this obviously by machine I'm just kind of doing a crazy zigzag stitch or you can do it by hand either way is fine so that's what it ends up looking like and a tool that really helps is this stiletto and it helps when you're putting your fabric twine into your beads as well as when you're working with a smaller project it's always nice to keep your fingers out of the machine so a stiletto is great for that purpose as well and then just some scissors I just have my little snips that I'm using today and a needle and thread so let's get started the first thing you want to do and again this is completely you can be your own designer here I'm going to show you how I made, how this style is made. You take some strips of the twine and you just kind of measure your own wrist. Ugh. By the way, I am sick, so my voice is weird and I might, I might cough or snuff a bit. Sorry about that. It's been quite the week. Um... <clears throat> So you kind of give yourself a little bit leeway for just, you know, to give you some wiggle room. But it's basically, you know, the size of your wrist plus maybe an inch or two. And I did four strips of those, that size. And then a double size one <clears throat> plus about two inches for the button loop so then you kind of design how you want this to go I'm gonna do like so and if you don't feel comfortable with some of your joins in here and that'll make sense once you understand how to make this fabric twine then you can go ahead and do a couple stitches, either hand sew or on the machine, just to make sure that that 
your joins are nice and strong. And then you do one side together, either side. And you're gonna sew to keep this together. You're actually gonna do both sides. Just do one at a time, obviously. And again, you can do this by hand or by machine. And I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch just because it kind of spreads things out a little bit better. But if you don't have a zigzag stitch, like I have a quilting machine that does not have a zigzag stitch, it's straight stitch only. You can do that too. Just kind of go back and forth a few times to make sure that these are secure. So you want to stick it in the machine, hold it together, and just go back and forth and back and forth a couple times. And I'll do that off camera so you don't have to listen to my machine. So here is the result of when I went back and forth and back and forth. I actually went to town on it because I thought it would be kind of fun to do quite a bit of stitching back and forth. So I went back and forth probably about 10 times. And this kind of project, it doesn't matter what your stitches look like. If you're doing this by hand, seriously, you know, it's boho. So it's supposed to look like you just made it. So <laughs> just have fun with it. Um, the other thing I did is I edged it. I just did zigzag again, but if you had a serger, you could do that. I just wanted to make sure that was nice and secure on the edge there. And then you just, or before you do that, you want to trim it so that everything's even, and then you go ahead and edge stitch or another zigzag stitch, however you'd like to do it. So I did it about an inch and a half in, and this is your side that you're going to have your button. So you want to have a nice, sturdy platform for your button. Then you're going to put your beads on. So if you see how it goes now, you're going to have this little loop up here and that is going to be your button loop. And you have the rest of your your lines of uh, fabric twine supporting that. So make sure that your, your doubled loop one is in the middle because that's where your button's going to be. Then you won't have a wonky bracelet. So now we go about stringing our beads <clears throat> and uh, again just have fun with this put them wherever you want and you kind of get it started you know this depends on how big your shaft of your bead is you want to just make sure that your your internal your sh I guess it is a shaft is big enough to support your fabric twine here but this is where this stiletto comes into play because it helps you get that in there and I also want to apologize for my nail polish I could not find my nail polish remover so this is a thousand layers <laughs> I'm really sorry if it bothers you okay so then you just kind of place them where you want and since they're tight together I'm gonna kind of offset them so also another tip I didn't do that to this side but if you want to keep these nice and secure at this end you can go ahead and individually just give these a few stitches makes it a little easier to get in your beads but just remember don't don't sew them all together yet because you need them individually you need to put your beads on so you don't want to sew that together yet so I'm going to offset them as I said so that they kind of give you a little bit more space here and obviously you can't do that on the loop one but you could have but prior to sewing these together and I think on this one I actually did start on this side so if you planned better than I just did, you can sew on this side and then you will have open, your center one will be open in order to put beads on it like I did here. So that won't be happening here, but it's okay. Again, this is kind of, of whatever kind of project. 
my favorite kind. So we both, both my husband and I got sick this week and uh, it's rare that that happens and it was pretty horrible because we take care of old people and when you're both sick and you're trying to balance that, it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors situation. <laughs> uh, whoever is less... Uh, snotting up at the time I guess so I'm just gonna leave it like that for now speaking of which I have to grab a Kleenex here but again as many beads as you want you know you could depending on how much space you have here you could continue but I'm just gonna leave it at four for now okay so uh, the next thing you can do is after you you know that you're done with your bead work you could run a line of stitching here again by hand or on the machine to secure those beads or if you're going to put more beads on there you could run a line of stitching and then bead again run a line of stitching just to hold those beads in place so that they don't come off so once you're you're done doing that and you've gotten to the to the end I'm just going to even these up a little bit don't cut this one that's your little loopy then you do the exact same thing as you did to this side so you want to stitch all of these together flat back and forth back and forth making sure that your loop is big enough for your button so I'm going to do that off camera as well so I went ahead and actually put another row of beads in there because it was bothering me <laughs> that I didn't have another one and I actually could have put another one right here too so you just kind of design as you go and so I went ahead and matched the amount of ziggy zaggies that I put in to the other side making sure my loop was pretty secure so all that's left to do now is add our little button so with shank buttons because they're kind of out there and loose you just want to make sure that you use a pretty strong thread and so I have this super strong thread that I use when I make dolls for their hair and things and it's pretty unbreakable so again because this is a handmade boho project my favorite kind um, it doesn't really matter if you're messy or not so you don't need any super perfect skills for this you really don't so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of embed that you don't have to shank buttons are kind of meant to be up but it's a pretty big shank so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of embed it in the loops there and just start my little hand sewing here so like I said it doesn't really matter how good your sewing skills are you can always say I meant to do that as long as I think as long as the thing is that you're making that you're making it secure and made to last because that's the whole point is you would like your handmade things to last because so many of our things that we buy ma mass manufactured just do not last and we're just kind of a throwaway society now and we got to stop that so make your when you when you do hand sew when you anything that you make by hand 
make with pride and make it strong made to last so you just kind of do your little knot however you want poke it through snip your thread and again if you wanted to do this whole project with my hand it'll take you a little longer but you could absolutely do anything with this project by hand so there you go your loop works this one looks like I made it a little big for me but so I guess a tip that I would have is depending on when you make your twine Sometimes you can get it loose and sometimes you can make it super tight and depending on what materials you use, it can be stretchy. So maybe when you measure that around your wrist, stretch it out a little bit and that'll help you determine how big your strips can be, but that's okay. I can wear it up here with my other one. That will never come off. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So, again, sustainable materials that you can find at your anywhere in your home. And be sure to go check out Darlene's links down below to the tutorial on both her beads and how to make these fabrics twine from scraps. Okay, well, thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, just a reminder that I'm working on a stash, de-stash fabric and reorg my hoard series. And I apologize, episode two might be a day late, but uh, this sickness really hit us pretty bad. So I'm trying to work around that and make you some good content, but... When you're down, you're down. So thanks again. Remember to subscribe going forward. I only get sick once a year usually. <laughs> so this usually will not be an issue in the future. And share if you'd like. And thank you for tuning in. Bye.